Welcome to Chatting Shit with Austique, the podcast where we chat about shit with inspirational people from all walks of life. Today, we are joined by the wonderful and inspiring Brandon West. We hope that you enjoy this conversation. Welcome to Chatting Shit with Austique. It's lovely to have you here with us, Brandon. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thanks for having me. Before we start, um, where are you based? Where are you? I'm in Ohio in the United States. Fabulous. Uh, well, I'm in, we're in London and I thought we'd start really, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to have your stoma. Yeah, I have Crohn's disease. Uh, I got that when I was 27 and had the first surgery a couple months after I first got sick. And is that when you had your stoma or did you have any kind of medication or anything Uh, before? When I first got sick, they tried tried medications in the hospital, but they didn't work. So I had the stoma in 2019. Okay, great. And looking at your social media, I can see that you're really into the gym and that you've really kind of documented that and your your journey. Have you always been interested in pumping iron? (laughs) Um, I haven't always been. I got into it the first time I got sober, which was about a year and a half before I got sick. Um, so I was doing it for about a year and a half and then out of nowhere I got sick (laughs) and then, uh, had to stop for a while. And then after your surgery, um, is that kind of when you reignited the kind of love or passion for the gym? So after my first surgery, uh, I didn't get back into it for probably three years. I was, um, I was already an alcoholic and I was depressed and then this happened. And so I just didn't do anything for about three years and just went to work and drank and that was it. And then three years after the first surgery, I had a, they had to move the stoma and I got the proctectomy. And so after I recovered from that surgery is when I decided to get back to it. Amazing. And did you have to make any kind of modifications or change your workouts at all following the movement of your, of your stoma and surgery? So when I went back to the gym, I didn't really have to modify my workouts too much. I started really slow. I got an in-person trainer, which was incredibly valuable. Um, I think if you're going to pay the money to get a trainer, you should go in person, even if they aren't specialized in ostomies, seeing somebody there with you to watch you move and to be able to help fix what you're doing right there is just super valuable. And there's only so much an online coach can do. So if you're going to pay for it, get an in-person trainer. Uh, My trainer that I had was great. He didn't even, he didn't know what an ostomy was before he started working with me but it didn't, it didn't matter much. And he learned and we learned together and it was great. So definitely you don't have to modify things as much, but I would get for safety and everything. I would get an in-person trainer. And did you ever have to get any kind of support belts or any other kind of like things to help in the gym? Yeah, I didn't, um, I just use a 
just a regular weightlifting belt for things like squats and deadlifts and things like that. But besides that, um, I haven't really. If you start slow and work on your core, it. I haven't had any issues. I'm not going to say nobody will, but I haven't had any. Amazing. And when you did get back into the gym after, um, you know, your sobriety and having the surgery, um, did you always think I'm going to document this online or like, what was the inspiration for really putting that content online? I think I was, I was already posting a little bit when I first started. Um, but my motivation was just just to post about my life and what I'm doing. And I think most of the things I post are things that I would be posting anyways, even without the stuff. But it's just working construction and going to the gym. It's just normal, uh, everyday stuff. And I think it's important to now that I've, you know, gotten kind of into the awesome community, I think it's important to show just normal life and not every, not every post is about appointments or meds or it's not um, just, yeah, just showing my life, I guess. And did having your surgery um, and whether or not the gym played a role in it at all, but have you always been kind of very positive and just get on with life and it is, you know, just crack on? Or did you have any kind of trials or tribulations following your surgery? I, I've always tried to have a sense of humor about it and I've always tried to I've always tried to be a funny person the whole, my whole life, but the, and I tried to put on a good face about, you know, being brave, I guess, but I struggled with it inside for quite a while, years, and I think since I was already an alcoholic, it gave me an excuse to start drinking again. And it was, well, you know, obviously I'm depressed. I've got all this going on, but that really just caused, um, it caused more problems than it fixed. So after my second round of surgeries is when I was, I had had enough and it was time to just move on. Then <laughs> this is your life. Now, what are you going to do with it? I mean, yeah, it's it's a lot and it's hard. And mm -hmm. to help you get through that, was it really just, you know, that inside you're like, okay, I'm done. We've just got to get on. Or were you able to turn to friends or family or support groups to help you through that? Um, not, I mean, my, not so much support groups. I've never really, I've never been to any of those. Um, but my fiance is wonderful. And she's been here the whole time through it all. So, you know, she she definitely helped, helped me with that um, aspect of just getting better and understanding when I wasn't doing well. And, you know, we got through it. So that was, uh, I think she was the biggest, my biggest strength through all that. I'm sure that's she, that's lovely for her to hear, um, and it's amazing that you did have that support. Did yeah. you, when you were kind of uh, approaching kind of your friends or other family members, or even at work, um, did you ever struggle to, to tell anybody? Did you tell anybody? Um, how did that kind of happen? I, oh, I, I told everybody. I'd be, <laughs> um, 
I never had a problem talking about it or telling people about it or making jokes about it. Um, Cause I think more people are just curious about it than anything. Um, I've never, I've never had a, um, like a negative interaction with somebody. It's always been, you know, people have made jokes and even been nervous to say them, but I think, I think it's hilarious. And, um, so people are, you know, more curious than anything. And it's usually like, you know, oh, well, my grandma's neighbor has one. So I kind of have heard about it, but people don't really get to ask questions and things about that. And so it's, it's, I've always been a really open book about it. And interesting, I think it'd be interesting to know in America, how, I mean, how do you get your, your products or how do you, get to decide what products that you actually get to use because we have the nhs here mm -hmm. in the uk but it'd be interesting to hear how it works out in america so i get my supplies um online you can it all really depends on your what kind and what company insurance you have but you can get each company allows you a certain amount of supplies every month. Um, and so it's, it kind of varies, at least with mine. Um, I had to, I went to my doctor and told, we tried out a bunch of different um, products, found which ones worked. And then he sent basically a prescription to the supply company and then they ship them every month. And I have, I do construction. So we have union insurance, which is incredible insurance. So I get, uh, I get a lot and everything is mostly covered, but for a lot of people, that's not the case. And so I think, everybody's experience with that side of it is different. Mm. You can ask 10 people and get 10 different answers. Mm. It is, it's a quite a different system out in the U S compared to here in the UK. And how, when you have had questions, you said, if you've not been sort of part of any groups, um, how how have you kind of managed kind of getting on with life or answering some of those questions that you may have around life with a stoma? Um, I don't, when I was first getting started with it, I just kind of figured it out, I guess, just took a guess at what, you know, I, I they did show me in the hospital how to change bags. So I did, I got that there. And then besides that, it's just figure it out. And it wasn't, I guess it wasn't the easiest way to do it. And I would have, you know, reached out or watched other people that make videos or things like that. I just didn't really know it existed that that kind of community was out there. So if I can, help somebody else not have to just figure it out. Then that's what I'd like to do. It's amazing. And even, even though, you know, you're saying you're posting your workouts, for example, just because it's part of your, your, your normal life, it's mm -hmm. equally, it's powerful for other people to see that you can do exercise. Yeah. Um, obviously, that might not be true for everybody, and everybody needs to take kind of precautions. But right. but you could be helping somebody else. Yeah, I uh, I never I never set out to be you know like an inspiration or anything like that, and. It it blows my mind how many people have you know reached out and said that my videos helped them or asked questions and I mean 
it's crazy that I'm being interviewed. That it, it doesn't make sense to me. But I guess just put if you're thinking about doing something like that, just put it out there, and somebody you never know who's going to get something out of it. I guess. I think it's. I mean, certainly the reason why we're so grateful for you being here is. I, I think it's really important that we show that anybody can have stoma surgery. Mm -hmm. And and like you said, often, so often people will potentially think, oh, my, my grandma's neighbor or somebody older. And actually that's not necessarily representation and people want to see themselves or just yeah. – something different and i think that mm -hmm. in and of itself is really important um yeah i agree yeah i what every time i would go to you know the surgeon or the gi doctor i was always the youngest person in the waiting room by far and so it was that that was like that was <laughs> scary for me kind of because it was you know i didn't see anybody that looked anywhere close to my age so it was like oh okay well i was only 27 and now i'm just grouped in with 60 plus year olds and it's like <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh no yeah. but so i yeah i definitely want to and i've talked to a lot of younger people and it's great to be able to tell them you know do you, it's not over you can still do whatever you want then you just it's just a little different now so that's what I, i'm grateful to be able to be in a position to help people like that it's awesome it is awesome and it's 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 a really wonderful thing to to share and to inspire even if you don't necessarily think you are <laughs> it, do, it doesn't you make are. any sense to me but i'm glad somebody gets something out of it and I mean, I know that you also like heavy metal and that you do, as you said, it doesn't really stop you doing anything in your life. And that's no. um, attending festivals and, and, and that sort of thing. Are there any kind of activities that actually you have taken up since having surgery? Um, not. I don't think anything that I've really taken up. Um, I kind of, I have like a really one track mind, I guess. So when I get on something, that's pretty much all I do. So all I do is go to the work, go to work and go to the gym. That's, then I come home, sleep. That's, and that's what I enjoy doing. So it's, I do pretty much the same thing every day and I love it. <laughs> that's great. That's great. And you said um, your fiance. So, yeah. are you? When are you getting married? I don't know. We've been engaged for five years, and we just haven't planned anything. Haven't jumped on it. But neither of us are going anywhere, so there's no real rush. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Yeah, and she is. She's awesome. She's uh, she's a nurse, and so it's been super helpful because not only uh, just the understanding of maybe not specifically, she's not a stoma nurse or a wound nurse, but she, one, isn't grossed out by anything. She's super interested by it, and it's Everybody should try to date a nurse. It's the best, <laughs> best <laughs> advice I could give you. <laughs> in, and in terms of advice, for example, like what would you say to somebody who has stoma surgery coming up? Like what could they expect? What should they be aware of? Um, I, I would say it's going to suck for a while. It's going to be hard. Uh, it's gonna, it's going to consume your life for a while. It's not gonna be fun. It's gonna be really hard. But 
it doesn't last forever and it does get better. And you'll get to a point someday where you don't even think about it, which sounds crazy while you're in the hospital. It's all you can think about all day long, but after you get out, it, it gets better. And it's not, like I said, it, all of this doesn't last forever. You'll be able to get on with your life and do whatever you want. And he, it doesn't last forever. Amazing. That's, that, that's great advice. And and so, what does the future hold for Brandon West? What are your hopes? What are your dreams? Don't know. Um, just hopefully doing the same things I'm doing now. I have good career. I have great family that has been with me. I mean, they were so supportive during the whole thing, and so I have. I have, you know, I have a great fiance. I just, I have a really great life and I want to keep doing the exact same things I'm doing now for the rest of my life. <laughs> Amazing. And before you had the surgery, I wonder though, did, did you or your family know what a stoma was or what life would be like with a stoma? Not really. Um, my mom has ulcerative colitis but not, and hers was bad, but not bad enough for a surgery. So when I got sick, we kind of knew a little bit about it, but nothing about stomas or anything, but we all, we all learned very fast. <laughs> yes. And, and bef I mean, before we go, um, I know you have a pussy cat. Yes, two um, of You have two cats. Yes, two cats. And as you said, you know your your one trap mind. You like what you like. Mm -hmm. Do you have you found that your animals to be of a kind of support for you? And oh, absolutely, or... yeah. They're my other best friends. <laughs> I spend all weekend with them. I talk to them more than I talk to any people, probably. <laughs> what are they called? Uh, Critter was the one, the big gray one, and then Chloe is our other one. She's Beautiful. pretty big also. <laughs> <laughs> like little tigers running around in Ohio. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Well, Brandon, thank you so much for your time. It was such a pleasure and an honor to have you. And thank you so much for having me. Please do keep in touch. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have you seen the new Austique skins yet? Austique skins are revolutionary ostomy pouch covers that were created to make the wearer feel confident, sexy and powerful in all of life's moments. From moments of intimacy to lounging by the pool, conquering a workout or simply heading out to lunch, skins have you covered. Even better, they're compatible with all major colostomy and ileostomy bags. Austique skins are available in a range of colours and skin tones and they're made from a revolutionary material that's completely waterproof, high quality, soft and comfortable. Skins are easy to use even with reduced dexterity and they work with both closed and drainable bags. Plus, skins are also environmentally friendly and vegan. There are four bundles available to buy now and you can also purchase individual skins. Head to austique.co.uk to find out more.